In today's Mass, let us remember Melanie M. Claudio, who's having an operation today, who's the daughter of Cora. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children sanctified by penance, and in your kindness, grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments. Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white-hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Dubakadenzer, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white-hot furnace and from your hands, O king, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white-hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But, he replied, I see four men, unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar explained, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon your cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. 
Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say, you will become free. Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but his son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will be truly free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in my Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from the Father. Jesus answered and said to him, Our Father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God, Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father? So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. In this particular week, we're in the fifth week of Lent. We are approaching closer and closer to the celebration of Holy Week and to the Passion of our Lord this coming Sunday. And each day, the readings help us to have a foundation to better understand what our Lord wants us to know, what he wants us to experience as we enter into Holy Week. And so today's first reading, this is actually a very well-known story among the Jewish people of three brothers who have essentially been sentenced to death for wanting to live their faith and are sent to a fiery furnace. And one of the things that we can see from uh, today's readings is that as this story has been remembered, the fiery furnace doesn't really seem so bad. They're kind of walking around in the fiery furnace with the angel of the Lord protecting them. And it's really a reminder uh, to us that the Jewish people came to see this particular story of uh, suffering as one in which the Lord would intercede on their behalf. Now, to put this in perspective, when we listen to the Passion readings of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're not going to have this experience of, oh, it's not so bad after all. What we're going to hear instead is Jesus saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We're going to hear an account of true despair. We're going to hear an account of true suffering. And there is not meant to be any um, ice, icing put on what we will experience during Holy Week. 
Because I think any of us can recognize that in uh, history, in the lives of the saints, there's some accounts of saints' martyrdom where they were very willing to go to their martyrdom, and there were some where it was quite horrendous. And I'm sure all of us have our own favorite saints that we can think about in terms of that are martyrs, what their end of life was like. But one of the things that our Lord wants us to understand also in today's gospel is that not only is he going to be experiencing suffering, but he's also going to be rejected by the people. And today's gospel helps us to understand that dialogue, that desire Jesus, Jesus had of teaching the people about who he was and also teaching the people about what they were doing. Today's gospel is very clear. Jesus says to them, you are trying to kill me. That the questions that are being asked are not being asked because uh, they have some kind of need for greater knowledge. They're really being asked in order to some way frame Jesus, in order to be able to put him to death. And one of the things that we see in today's gospel is that Jesus is constantly telling them who he is and where he has come from. And as we see, there is a smart answer to each one of Jesus' teachings to the people. One of the gifts of us celebrating Holy Week, and for those of you that are going to be here on Friday, the Stations of the Cross, is that we are able to enter into what our Lord was experiencing through the words of the gospel. We are, ent we are able to enter into the incredible journey that the Stations of the Cross provide for us as a way to understand what our Lord experienced, but also for us to understand in life what sometimes we experience in our own suffering. It might be trite to say, but as some of us know, life isn't always easy. It can be challenging. And our Lord is provided a way for us to, first of all, make sense of the suffering that we experience in our life, to be able to enter into it, to be able to participate with our own suffering, but always to understand that suffering is never the final answer. Our Lord, through the celebration of Easter, through the resurrection, overcomes the power and sin and death once and for all in history and continues to do so each and every day. In today's first readings, these brothers experienced a grace of their suffering somehow being a way for them to encounter God's love. And as we see, the angel of the Lord was present with them. We can only imagine how much greater the gift is that each of us have received through our faith. Because we don't only have an angel present with us, but we have our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us the hope of life, who forgives us of our sins, and overcomes the power of death for all time.
Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray first of all for Francis, our Pope, for our bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all those who are sick, for those who are undergoing surgery, for all those who are doctors, nurses, and in the medical fields. They recognize that Christ is always with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let's pray for our first responders, for those who serve us in our greatest needs. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let's pray for our troops serving throughout the world, that they may return safely to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us remember the intentions of the supporters of the Society of Little Flower. For them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us now bring our own prayers before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's collection is to help support the care and maintenance of the shrine and the Museum of St. Therese. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings, which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which you poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people, and as you endow them with the confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as though the effects of your mercy are with them forever and ever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady Mount Carmel, go in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Spring is coming. Come <laughs>